welcome everyone to our Back to School uh, Sunday for 2012. And I want to give all of you students a word of encouragement. I want to give all of you teachers a word of encouragement today. Uh, you only have nine more months to go. <laughs> and, and, and that's it. Uh, and, and I hope, you know, you understand that. It's uh, or 36 weeks, however you want to uh, call it. Uh, the teacher asked Donald, what is the chemical formula for water? Donald replies, H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O. The teacher says, what in the world is that? Donald said, well, yesterday you said it was h Two O. <laughs> Your wife is going to get up 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I got it! <laughs> yeah, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Teacher asked little Susie, if I give you two rabbits plus two rabbits plus two rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? One. Susie started counting. She said, Seven. So no, no, Susie, if I gave you two rabbits, plus two rabbits, plus two rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? Susie started counting. She said seven. Teacher said, oh, oh, okay, okay. If I gave you two apples, plus two apples, plus two apples, how many apples would you have? Susie started counting. She said, six. Teacher said, okay. If I gave you two rabbits plus two rabbits plus two rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? She said, seven. She says, how in the world can you come up with seven rabbits? She said, you give me six and I already have one. <laughs> Make seven. Teacher told the student, said, you got 40 minutes to write an essay on a soccer match. As soon as you finish, you can go off to recess. Within two minutes, little Johnny brought in his essay. The teacher said, how in the world did you write that so quickly? He said, ah, he said, I just wrote, match call off due to rain. <laughs> we got smart kids in our school. Teacher asked little Jimmy, when were the First and Second World Wars fought? Jimmy said, I don't know about the first, but the second one was after the first. <laughs> Sounds like me in school. But Dad said, son, this time I want an 80 on your final exam. The son looked at the dad and said, how about 100? The daddy looked at the boy and said, Son, he said, uh, don't joke with me. The son looked at him and said, Daddy, you're the one that started this joke. <laughs> Just a few moments, I'm going to be praying for your children. Uh, for every school child, college student, you that works uh, in the education department. There's several reasons today that we need to pray for children. We need to pray for them because they're a special gift to God. Yes. Let, me, let me just, and I'm going to shoot straight for the next 10 minutes. Uh, whether you were planning on your child or not, your child is not an accident. Right. And don't ever, don't ever, you may have done it before, but for your next children, your grandchildren, or whatever, uh, don't ever look at that child and say, you know, we wasn't planning you. Because you make them feel like, oh, well, I'm not wanted in this family. We pray for our children because they need a hedge of a pr protection around them in the school that they go, go to. They need to choose good friends. How many knows that bad company uh, is bad company? They need to be able to endure prayer pressure and they need to make some good grades and pass. 
I want to speak just for, just for a few moments, a little thought out of the book of Mark in the 10th chapter, just a little bitty thought, and then we're going to take time and we're going to pray for these children and just love on them. 10th chapter, 13th verse, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. So mamas and daddies are bringing little children to Jesus so Jesus could pray with them and touch them and love on them. And the disciples, his staff, stopped mama and daddy for bringing the little kids to Jesus. Verse, verse 14, when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He was mad. He was angry. He was furious. He was ticked off that his staff stopped the little children from coming to him. And so Jesus said to the disciples, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Verse 16, and he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and he blessed them. It was a common thing in Bible days for Mamas uh, to take their children to a prophet, to a rabbi, to a priest, and let the rabbi, a priest, a prophet just pray over the children and just touch them with their hands and, and bless them in the name of the Lord. We, we still do that today. We have dedication services. People, people want their little child prayed over uh, by a, a priest or a rabbi, wants, wants them to bless them. That's I dedicate probably more, uh, in this church, I dedicate probably more non-church children than I do church children. Isn't that amazing? Uh, people just from the city, here's, you know, you, you pray over children, you dedicate children, and, and uh, ask me if I would dedicate uh, their children when they're, when they're born. Because it's just something about it. And it was the same thing in the Bible days. They want it, and here was a prophet of God, so they wanted that prophet of God to pray over their children and to bless their children. I want to focus on one little thing this morning, just for the next five or six minutes. I want to focus on one little thing in this passage, and that is verse 14. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. This word hinder means uh, to hold back to hamper, to make difficult, to prevent, to obstruct, or to delay the progress. So Jesus is telling the disciples, looking at the disciples, and he's saying, hey, don't hamper these children. Don't make it difficult for these children to come to me. Let them come to me. Don't hinder them. Don't prevent them. Don't obstruct them or delay the progress that is going on. Now, we think how awful that is for the disciples, but the truth of the matter is, if we're not careful, we as adults can be doing the same thing to children, if we're not careful. And so I started thinking about the way that we hinder children. I want to give you just one quick thought-provoking point this morning, and that is the way we hinder children is by neglect by neglect. You say, Pastor, I've never neglected my child. Let me finish. When it comes to church, we have a tendency to look at children differently. Example. Let me give you an example. Have you ever stood in front of a mirror and talked to yourself? You get my age, you don't even need a mirror to talk to yourself, believe me, but Nevertheless, do you ever look in front of a mirror and talk to yourself and say, you're punished. I'm not letting you go to that church function this Friday night. You're punished. You, you hadn't been good that week, this week. So that's it. I'm not letting you fellowship with them people. You're not going first. You, you've never done such a thing. It's an adult. But we punish our children from church activities. It's quiet. Figure it'd be quiet. Yeah, we we uh, you know let the kids play on their computer, let them watch TV, 
But your punishment is, no, you cannot go to that water slide so you can be with all of them good little Christian children and be under some godly counsel. No, you can't go there because you've been bad, that you didn't do your homework this year, so I'm not going to let you go that no, no, no. We're, we're, we, we treat children different. We would never think about us punishing ourselves away from a church activity, but we punish our children. Listen, Mom and Daddy, if you want to punish your children, I'm all for punishment. Believe me. I'm all for disciplinary, uh, being disciplinarian. Uh, I, I believe in that. But don't punish them away from some church activity. Uh, find something else to do. Make them get on the roof and clean the gutters or or, or, or do something, but, but don't punish them. We think, here's how we neglect our children. We think that our adult service, are you listening to me just for a few moments? We think that our adult service is very important, but yet think that children's church, Wednesday night children's classes, is just a babysitting service to keep the children occupied so they would not interfere with us adults. We neglect, we neglect our children. I had, I had, a, I had a woman, uh, I, I've been every three months or every, I think it's every three months that I got with my children's church pastor this year. I said, I, I, said, I want the little children in church, in big church. I said, I want them to hear pastor preach so they may not understand anything I say, but I want them to see how mom and daddy worships. I said, I, I want every two or three months, I forgot what it was, I said, I want them, I want them in big church. I, I, want them, I want them in here. I want them to feel what we're feeling. I don't want to neglect them. I had a parent walked out two weeks ago. She said, she said, I think it was two or three weeks ago, she said, you mean they're not having children's church? And I looked at her and I said, no. I said, uh, I said, I'm having the children in big church today just turned around and just walked, just walked straight out. Man, I felt like getting in my truck, getting my big old cowboy boots, the pointy one, you know, and just, no, no, no. Yeah, I did think about it. You know why? Because we feel like us adults are so important, and, and, and children, we, we think sometimes children are a liability Instead of a asset. Come on, preach it. That's good. And so we have a tendency to neglect in the church. We have a tendency to neglect our children and only cater to our adults. Yeah. Do you know most churches, a lot of a lot of churches, a lot of churches. You, you, they, they, they look at children as just, you know, something that happened, something that's got to be here. So, yeah, we got to have some kind of children's church program, but, you know, no special, the budget, you know, no, we're not spending all that kind of money on children. And, and you, you, you know why? You know why a lot of pastors cater to adults instead of children? Because adults has money in that little bitty blue envelope every Sunday morning. Where they may have a hundred dollars, a child only maybe have a dollar, if anything at all. So a child is not revenue to a church. So therefore, let's just kind of put them on the side. I say baloney with that. Jesus looked at his disciples and he rebuked his disciples because his disciples would not let these little children come to Jesus. And Jesus did not like that at all. And then in verse 14, it said that Jesus took these little children, loved on them, he held them, and he blessed them. Instead of neglecting our children, I want to challenge you today. Instead of neglecting our children, I think we need to invest into our children. Now, did you know that 83% of Christians... 83% of born-again Christians was born again before they reached the age of 18 years old. 17% gave their hearts to God after the age of 18 years old. Wow. You don't think we need to invest in children? I think we need to invest in children. 
I don't think we ever need to neglect them. I think we need to do what Jesus did, and that's just love on us instead of shun children. Let, let, let me just, uh, thought-provoking, then I'm praying, but let, let me just give you a little, really good thought-provoking for a lot of you daddies and mamas. And, and, uh, because you know children has feelings. We think us adults are the only one that ever has feelings. Uh, somebody can hurt us and we can get over it. I hope you can get over it. But sometimes a little child, you hurt their feelings and it's damaged them for life. And so I, I you know, I, I'm just challenging you. Let's, let's never, let's never, let's never, ever shun a child. Always make a child feel important. That's what we're doing today. That's why we're taking the whole service today. And, and I'm, not, I'm not preaching a regular sermon today because I want to touch a child's life. Let me, let me give you an example one way we shun children. Uh, could I have uh, you two and little Josh up here? I'm, I'm standing at the door, and, and I think, I think if, if you've been here any time, you visitors don't know me, and I'm not putting flowers on my shoulders, uh, but I stand at the door, I greet people when they come in, when I'll, other pastors think I'm absolutely crazy for, for being at the back door and touching people's lives, but, but that's part of me. I've been pastoring 37 years, and I've done that from day one. That's, that's just part of me. I, I'm a people's person. I try to be at least. And, and uh, just let people feel my love just by a handshake. But, but, but listen, listen, listen. If, if you've been with me any time, you know this is true. I have nothing to apologize for. You know this is true. If this family walks in church, and they've got a bunch of daughters, but if this family walks in church, I'm going to say, hey, Michelle. Hey, Raymond, how you doing, buddy? And the next thing I'm going to do is look at that child that a lot of people think is so insignificant. Hey, dude, what do we do all the time? I hit, I hit my hand real good. Now, what if this family would walk in church Hey, Josh, how you doing, buddy? Give me five, dude. High five. Low five. Way to go. And ignore his parents. What if I just paid attention to a child and ignored you? You know what you'd do? You would pack your bags and find another church. And you would say, that guy is so arrogant and stuck up. Well, let's face it. Does Joshua have feelings? Does he care? Does he want to feel wanted? This couple would like to feel wanted, right? They, they wouldn't want to be ignored by me. So here is my question. Why would we want to ignore children? I don't know half of these children's names. I don't know half of your name. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't know my own name if I wouldn't look it up every morning just to see who I am. I, I'm not good at names. My wife is. I recognize you, and, that, and that's about it. I'm, I'm just being honest. I can't remember all these names. But this does this little boy something. All these precious little girls that belong to them. Thank you. It does them so. I hug them every every time. All these children. I'm saying that to say this: they have feelings, and you know what? When they grow up, they're gonna say, "Boy, I was loved in that church. I was loved in that." And they're not gonna be bitter against some pastor when they grow up. And you know what? They're not gonna be bitter against some church member that just completely ignored them. You ain't getting what I'm saying, are you? And I'm going to preach 30 more minutes. <laughs> Never neglect a child because they are so special and 
Jesus got ticked off because the disciples thought that adults was more important than children. And he rebuked his disciples because they would not let a child come to him. So my thought for you today, these little children, they are not liabilities. They are assets. Where would this church be in 20 years if it were not for our children? I know where I'll probably be. I'll probably be in heaven building your cabin. Where would they be in the next 20 years? Where would this church be if it were not for children today? God bless you.